Welcome Commanders, Shine Darkly here. Today we're going to visit the newly found generation ship uh, Lyceon, which can be found in the Alonus system, in the heart of the bubble, not too far to go. And from there, we're going to set course for the last planet in the system, Alonus 10. Once you get to Alonus 10, you're going to want to set course to the Hore system. So we we'll head towards Hore. And the place we're looking for is about 22,000 light seconds away. It was found on the 23rd of April by Commander Lexic, I think. The easiest way I find to do any of these is to just keep the left panel open until we get to the distance. So here we are, coming up on 22,000 light seconds. And there's the generation ship marker. So we'll choose that and swing round towards it. You've got to be quite quick, because it doesn't stay around for long, at that speed anyway. Now the generation ships were sent out a thousand years ago. About 70,000 of them went out over a period of a couple of hundred years. And up until now, we hadn't really found any record of them. We knew they left, but no one had ever heard of them since. But in the last week, firstly this ship was found, and then a second one, which I'll hopefully be doing a video about later in the week. One word of warning when you're on approach. You drop in pretty much right on top of the ship. So I definitely recommend throttling back as rapidly as possible. In my case, I almost went splat head first into it. But they're pretty big. All in all, it's about four kilometers long, with a big dish on the front, almost like a solar sail. Lots of tanks for storing things, and these massive habitation rings. So if we swing around to the front, I'll try and give you some idea of scale. Is this massive solar sail come dish? Let's see if I can slide down to the front without hitting it. Now this one is derelict. Along the side of the ship there are five beacons that you can scan that will give you the whole story. Later on in the video I'll play the whole thing back so I'll give you a spoiler warning just before I start that. Okay, Let's see how it compares to a corvette. Now, a corvette's not a small ship. As I pull back here 
it's dwarfed in comparison to this thing. So this dish alone is the size of the front of a station. Okay, let's run down the rest of the ship and see what we can see. Right behind the dish section, we've got these tanks. Because they're close to the habitation rings, I assume they're things like water, supplies for the people on board. Definitely not fuel. You'll see on the back end of the ship, there's more than enough tanks for that later on. Here are the habitation rings. Three of them in all, all rotating to give them artificial gravity. And behind those, we've got a load of what well, I can only assume are cargo pallets. But these aren't the size of normal cargo containers. Each one of these is the size of the Corvette. And then behind that, we have a huge section of tanks. This is probably the fuel. When these ships set off, they had no idea how long they were going to stay in space, how long it was going to take them to get to their destinations. They carried an awful lot of fuel. And then there's another more beacon, we'll come back to that in a moment. And then we get to the back of the ship and the huge engines. Let's run back down to the front. Now I'll show you how to find out the story of what happened with this ship. I mentioned that there were five beacons. Now you can scan each one of them. And they give you a little part of the story. In a big ship like this, it gets a little tricky because you've got to be within 200 meters to scan them. Get within 200 meters and use the new shiny data link scanner that comes with all ships. There we go. No, because I've scanned it before, it'll tell you it's already been accessed. And for the rest of this video, I think I'll let the crew tell you the story themselves. Thanks for watching. Decisions log two three seven nine forward slash two. Nothing out of the ordinary to report. Minor injuries, aches and pains from the more vulnerable crew members, and the usual bout of influenza you'd expect with so many people living in such close confines. It seems the current strain of influenza is becoming resistant to the vaccines we've developed on board. Only thing of note was a minor injury to one of the survey team. Gottlieb sustained a minor laceration. 
He was taking a mineral sample on a nearby asteroid. The suit got breached, but he managed to apply an emergency seal before anything serious happened. I only hope the sample he took was worth the scar it's gonna leave. Decisions log 2387-8. We have an emergency. The strain of influenza infecting the ship has become completely resistant to any vaccines or treatment we can find. 13% of the ship's population has now succumbed to the infection and so far 8 have died. I've initiated emergency measures on quarantining the infected. The epidemiologist, Dr. Monroe, is working around the clock to find a solution. I'm sure she'll come up with a cure before long. Decisions log 2463-5. Dr. Monroe made a discovery that has filled me with dread. This contagion doesn't derive from the influenza epidemic. It's altogether more alien than that. The contaminant has no human origin. It comes from Gottlieb, the scientist who was injured a few days ago. Whatever mineral he was taking a sample of must have got into his blood. It's mutated into some kind of virulent pathogen. Monroe is unable to isolate the microorganism that's causing it. It spreads. Fast. Quarantine hasn't worked and people are starting to panic. We're doing our best to come up with a counteragent, but I'm not sure we have the resources. Decisions log 2499-9. We are lost. Monroe died two days ago and any chance we had of finding a cure for this epidemic died with her. Half the ship's population is already dead and 98% of those remaining are infected. Teams are working around the clock to vent the bodies into space, but they're piling up so quickly. The riots haven't helped. People are panicking, angry, don't know what to do. When you see your family die, I guess you just get desperate. I don't know what to do. Suppose I should do my job, but it's no use. At least I've avoided an infection. For now. I should probably go for one last walk, while I still can. 